Let's very briefly consider the average energy stored in an inductor. We saw in the previous video that the average power in an inductor or capacitor was zero. There was just as much energy put in as was taken out during one cycle. But the average energy is not zero. There is energy in that, in this case, in the magnetic field of the uh, inductor. So here we have the current I sub P sine of omega T. It's instantaneous energy. The energy at any given instant of time is simply equal to one half L I of T squared, or I squared of T, which is equal to one half L I sub P squared times the sine squared of omega T. We want to find the average energy. In order to do that, we need to integrate. It's easier to integrate the sine squared of omega T if we use this trigonometric substitution, or the trig identity here. Substituting this for the sine squared, we have then this. Once again, we're going to use that same trick, and we're going to take this one half here and write it as one over the square, well, one of these one halves, and write it as one over the square root of two times one over the square root of two, and then write our instantaneous energy in terms of the effective current. So we have then this constant here being one half L I effective squared. Then to calculate the average energy, we simply integrate over one period and divide by t. Once again, this cosine of 2 omega t has no contribution. And we get then that the average energy is equal to 1 half L I effective squared. A very nice form that looks an awful lot like the current or the energy stored in the magnetic field due to a DC current. You'll recall that that energy for a DC current was simply equal to 1 half L I squared. And we have a similar situation for the capacitor. Without spending a lot of time going through all the details, this time we have a voltage that's sinusoidal. Its instantaneous energy would be that. Again, using that same trigonometric identity, or trig, yeah, trig identity, we replace the sine squared term with that, go through and do the integration, and come up with, again, a very familiar form, that the average energy stored in the electric field of a capacitor is equal to 1 half C V effective squared. So for example, if we had a voltage across this capacitor, a voltage driving the capacitor equal to V of T equaling 10 cosine of omega T, then the average energy well, first of all, the effective voltage, V effective, would equal 0 0.707 times 10, or 7.07 .07 volts. And the average energy, then, would be 1 half, oh, we, let's let the capacitance value be a 1 microfarad capacitor, because the amount of energy stored in it is a function of the capacitance. So then the average energy would be 1 half C, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 6th, V effective squared, or 7.07 .07 squared. And that works out to be 25 microjoules. That's the average energy stored in the capacitor. During part of the cycle, you'd have more energy. During part of the cycle, you'd have less energy. But the average energy stored in the capacitor would be 25 microjoules for this example.